Whether you like it or not, oftentimes I lean more towards the not myself, AI text, AI images, video, audio, and of course, code generation is here. It's getting better and better every single day. And if you think you're seeing less of it, that's because in a lot of cases, it's gotten so good that you don't actually realize that this is AI generated. A lot of people still think there are these very obvious tells, and for some things, there certainly is. But for a lot of it, it's basically indistinguishable from human work. Now, whether that's a good thing or not, that's totally up for discussion. And I know there's a lot of people that value the artist over just a creation. They want to see something made by an actual person, and I completely understand that. But there is a problem that has been getting bigger and bigger, and it's a problem that you can't put your head in the sand about and just not think of. We are seeing people grow up using AI tooling from a very young age. People who are first learning to program, first learning to draw, first learning to do a lot of this stuff, using AI tooling from the very beginning. It is becoming more common to use this as a learning tool, more common to use AI over using a search engine, which to me seems absolutely insane. I don't understand it, but people are doing so. So, in the world of open source software development, the question becomes, how much do you or don't you allow in your project? A little over a week ago, I came across this. Lou no longer allows generative AI contributions. This is the GNOME image viewer, typically just called image viewer, but it actually does have a name. I just merged an addition to lose contribution guidelines that bans the use of AI generated content in contributions. For now, I came up with the following text. I am in favor of adopting a similar policy for all official GNOME software. Use of generative AI. This project does not allow contributions generated by large language models, LLMs, and chatbots. This ban includes tools like ChatGPT, Claude, Copilot, DeepSeek, and Devon AI. I would say includes, but not limited to, because of course there's going to be someone who tries to sort of circumvent the rules. Now, if they're circumventing the rules, you can ban them anyway, but just to make sure you don't have to deal with that conversation, includes, but not limited to, but it's a very minor nitpick. We are taking these steps as precaution due to the potential negative influence of AI generated content on quality, as well as likely copyright violations. As I said at the start of the video, I think quality is becoming a lot less of a concern, but this is a problem you're never gonna really deal with. At least, I don't know of anyone working on this problem. Copyright violations, not following software licenses. Yeah, that's a big issue, and that by itself is enough reason to ban it. This ban of AI generated content applies to all parts of the projects, including but not limited to code, documentation, issues, artworks, and exception applies for purely translating text for issues and comments to English. So if you are not a native English speaker, and you maybe don't understand some of the wording being used in an issue, or you're not really confident in your ability to write English, and you want to use a translation tool to go from whatever your native language is into English, that's okay. And I don't think there's anybody who would argue against that. Yes, these tools are not perfect, but this is a case of making things more accessible. It's not a case of making issues which are just frankly gibberish, you know, finding things in the project which are simply not real. This is making sure your text is somewhat understandable to a person in a different language. And GNOME, like most FOSS projects, is English first. So even though it is a worldwide project, you kind of need to know English or have some way to 
deal with English if you want to get involved. AI tools can be used to answer questions and find information. However, we encourage contributors to avoid them in favor of using existing documentation and our chats and forums. Since AI generated information is frequently misleading or false, we cannot supply support on anything referencing AI output. This is understandable. It's not something you wrote. So of course you can't, you know, support that thing. Now, when it comes to misleading information, this is especially true in cases where there is a clear cutoff point. So if you want to know something about maybe the newest version of GNOME and that's not included in the data set, well, that's not included in the data set. Also, when there are cases of limited information about a thing being included in the data set, it will fill in the gaps in many cases with things that seems reasonable enough, but if you dig far enough, well, you know, it's all a matter of how much data is there to actually build the output off of. If it's something where there's like a little bit, you're probably going to get nonsense. If there's a lot, hey, maybe you might get something of use. Now, regarding this point here about adopting it in other GNOME software, this is something that has been done following this being made. Now, you might notice these are making sure you're not a bot. The GNOME GitLab has added a thing where they do like bot detection now, so it actually breaks every single link that is posted, which is good. But a bunch of projects in the GNOME suite have adopted this exact text. Now, this text is very heavily inspired by what Servo has over in their text. It's basically the same idea here, but they have the not limited to. I don't know why you would base it off of that and then not include that very important part, but I'm sure there's... No, I don't think there's a reason. I think I just forgot to include that part. And then include some reasons for why they do this. Maintain a burden, correctness and security, copyright issues, and ethical issues. These are two that are very much not going to be fixed because the companies involved are either don't care or don't think they're problems. This is a matter of time and maintain a burden, you know, sort of depends on the specific contribution. Now, GNOME here is just an example. Servo would work just as well or any other project that puts in a restriction like this. The ultimate question then becomes... How do you know that a contribution is AI? There are a lot of people out there who think they are special, who think they'll always be able to tell. There's just something about that. It's given me AI vibes. I know that's AI. I don't have any evidence it's AI, but there's just... It, it, it feels like AI. Now, I'm not one of these people who think that at all. And I'm not one of these people who think that AI cannot perform well or outperform especially the average or sub-average developer. Because frankly, not everybody is this amazing developer who creates the best code you'll see. A lot of people out there are kind of just average. That's why it's the average. And when there's an average... There's a lot of people below the average. So once all the very obvious tells, like over commenting, using fake libraries, using old libraries, things like that are resolved. And the result you get is basically one contribution from a person and one contribution from an AI. And they're basically indistinguishable. It's following all of the rules of the project. The code works. It does the thing the person says it does without any additional things. When it comes to that point, how do you know the contribution is AI? And at that point, really all it comes down to is trust and vibes. Do you believe the person you're dealing with is acting in good faith? And this will work well enough for an established contributor or someone who has a history of contributing to things in the FOSS world. I have some major concerns with how I've already seen that being handled. The best example of this is over in artist communities. If you spend any length of time on social media around people who draw, 
you're bound to come across someone accused of using AI. Now, it might be someone you know, might be some random person, but you're going to see accusations just fly around all over the place. This is a very big deal in the art world, because if you're accused of using AI and you're caught using AI, you're basically Satan. Now, there are some people who, from the start, say they're using AI, but those are people, you know, who've made their, you know, wh where they stand clear from the start. But if you say that I made this and it turns out an AI made this, well, that's a pretty big deal. You're going to get harassed. You're going to get spammed with hate mail. People are going to demand that you prove that you're not using AI. Now, for some of these people, for a lot of these people, turns out, yeah, they were using AI, especially early on where the tells were pretty obvious. And even in cases where people were cleaning things up, they would miss a lot of things. And yeah, okay, you're using AI. Maybe you don't deserve all the hate you got, right? I think it's way too extreme how people are handled. But be honest, if you're drawing it, you draw it. If you didn't draw it, don't say you draw it. That's weird. That's cringe. But then there are the people who, turns out, they were never using AI. They've never used AI. It's just their style is a very common style and a style that is a common model output. But the result of the accusation is exactly the same. They get harassed. They get spam with hate mail. People demand to show that you're not using AI. Show me some proof. And even when they show proof, people still want more proof because people smelt blood in the water. They found people that they could reasonably harass, at least from their perspective, so they are going to do it. In the programming world, opinions on AI aren't that strong. But I'm still concerned with how the purity testing is going to go here, because if someone produces code which kinda looks like AI code, they're going to be treated as if they wrote AI code and they'll have to prove that they're not doing so. Now, there is tooling in place to make this easier in the FOSS world. We have things like Git, so if people are committing things over time, then you can prove that. But if you're not using source control until you send it up to the project, you know, you're going to have a single commit there with all the changes being made. And as these AI tools get better and better, and there's more integration into development environments, I just worry with how this is going to be enforced, right? Like, if someone is obviously proven to be using AI, sure. But if you're in a case where someone just throws it out there, you know, this can be very damaging to your position in the project. Now, I do think intent is very important here. A great example of this is with Curl or any other big project that has a bug bounty program. So, Daniel Stenberg, the founder, creator of Curl, will often publicize these bug reports where they're just nonsense. They're the most generic thing you'll ever see, just basically including the Wikipedia definition for buffer overflow and things like that, or security vulnerability. And if they do reference code, it's either going to be code that doesn't exist in the code base, code that used to exist in the code base, or a mix of the two. And these are people who are not using these tools to find a vulnerability. These are people who see the output. It says, there's a vulnerability here. They don't go and test it. They don't go and verify it. They just go and report it because there's a bug bounty program. Because they think if this is accepted, if it actually did find a real bug, they're going to get paid for it. This is someone who is acting maliciously. This is someone who is typically using a burner account, who has just opened it solely for the sake of this one issue. These are people who rightfully should be removed from your project. They are not trying to be a good contributor.
but that is a very different case from someone who maybe uses the cursor code editor, who generates some code, who modifies it a bit by hand, who verifies that the thing that was generated actually does the thing that it says it does, it actually fixes the problem, it actually introduces a feature, and that person is using the AI tool as more of a assistant rather than as the entirety of the work. This is very different from someone generating art and then pushing it as their own. It's very different from someone generating a fake bug report as a way to try to get a bug bounty. In the end, you may still consider these bad, and they still do have licensing issues, they still have copyright issues, and if you think it's a big issue, they still have ethical issues where a lot of these models, most of them, all of them, okay, maybe not all of them, most of the models are trained on just all manner of code with absolutely no expectation of it's going to generate code that actually fits into a project. It's not going to mix and match code bases that have completely conflicting licenses. It's not going to use proprietary code that should not be made public that happens to be on a private account, Microsoft. They've done that a couple of times. Um, sometimes their own code, which is very funny when that happens. That's also a big issue. But a lot of people want to look at AI as this black and white issue where there's a right way and a wrong way to look at it, but it's considerably more complicated than that. Personally, I do think this is a good approach for the project to take. I am concerned with the enforcement of this as things get better and better, but from a legal liability standpoint, you basically have to do this. But what do you think? Do you think this is something that is a concern in the FOSS world? Do you think more projects should do this? Do you think less should do it? How do you approach this AI tooling? Do you use it yourself? Do you try to avoid it? Do you really think about the licenses your project use when you're dealing with this tooling? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and a Yeah.